With the ceasefire now in place between Israel and Hamas, humanitarian groups are helping on the ground and they're providing life-saving aid and support. Now you've seen Yael Eckstein on our show and you've seen her in spots where she and I are traveling around Israel, seeing firsthand the significant work of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Joining us now is the president and CEO of the largest provider of emergency aid in all of Israel, Yale Eckstein of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Yale, first of all, uh, I'm glad there's a ceasefire. I'm praying that it holds, uh, but there must be an enormous sense of relief in Israel uh, with that announcement made just hours ago. Shalom, Governor. And firstly, thank you so much for having me on your show and with your amazing audience and staff there. Um, yes, there is definitely mixed emotions here in Israel. On one hand, we are so relieved that our children can leave the bomb shelters and go back to school and that we don't need to worry about rockets hitting every time we leave our house to go to the grocery store. Um, but there's also a sense really of the Hamas terrorists are still on our border. And so we seek peace, we yearn for peace, we pray for peace, and we're so happy now that God willing, there'll be peace, but it just reaffirms what Israel has been living with really since its establishment in 1948, that the next stage of calm is only for our enemies to gear up for the next war. You guys are busy every day of the year providing food and emergency assistance. I imagine that during a time like this, the resources that uh, the fellowship is involved with are stretched incredibly thin because now you have so many more people who are hurting, who are suffering, who are homeless because of the rockets that have been uh, bombarded into Israel. Describe for us what's going on with uh, the International Fellowship of Christian and Jews right now. Well, on a regular day, the fellowship helps over 15,000 of Israel's poorest elderly who don't have any family, don't have any support, that we bring them food, we bring them comfort. And as over 3,000 rockets are launched at Israeli cities, those elderly have moved to their bomb shelters. And many more elderly who have no one to bring them food, comfort them, especially during this terrifying time. And so the fellowship came up with programs where we brought thousands of entertainment packages to children and special needs children in bomb shelters. We went and we brought thousands of meals to elderly in their bomb shelter. And we even identified the locations where the most rockets were falling, where there were no bomb shelters. And we placed 20 bomb shelters on the ground under rocket fire um, in order to save lives, because that's what our Christian friends rely on us to do in their name, on their behalf. And we do that immediately without stopping and without waiting. Yeah, you must be very proud and grateful for the commitment that these people are making. They're not military people. These are just humanitarians. All of our staff has been leaving their families in bomb shelters, their children in bomb shelters, in order to go out and provide for the least of these, for those who don't have anyone to care for them. And they do it with a smile and feeling privileged. There's been a lot of suffering in Gaza itself because, uh, unfortunately, Hamas, which is not a government, it's a terrorist organization. People don't fully grasp that. They're run, the whole Gaza area is run by terrorists rather than a government. Um, and I'm not asking you to jump into the political aspect of this, but what our viewers need to understand is that part of the reason that so much destructions or destruction happens on that side is because when Hamas gets money, most of it coming from Iran, they don't spend it to buy bomb shelters and uh, safe places for their citizens, our food or infrastructure that would help them with hospitals. They use the money to buy rockets so that they can fire them at civilians. But in Israel, uh, the Israeli government uh, insists on buildings having bomb shelters and they have the Iron Dome without which thousands of Israelis would have been killed. And I, I just think when people say, well, that many Israelis didn't get killed, there's a reason they didn't get killed because the government works very hard and makes great, great strides to protect them through the Iron Dome and shelters and, and other means. Is that a big thing that people don't understand if they don't live there in Israel? Wow, Governor, just hearing you say that feels like, finally, somebody <laughs> understands. It's 
so important because that's the starting point. You know, every day when I pray for the children of Israel over this conflict, I pray for the children of Gaza also because they are being held hostage by their terror organization who has become a government. I go back to 2005 when Israel took every last Jewish person out of the Gaza Strip so that the Palestinians can have their state. Israel invested millions of dollars building greenhouses and setting up the structure that they can have a functioning economy. And then there were elections in the Gaza Strip between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. And what Hamas did was killed every single rival by throwing them off buildings, dragging them through the streets by horses, throwing rocks at their dead bodies in order to make a point. They burned down every greenhouse that Israel left them, every single economy uh, poss- economic possibility for thriving there, they destroyed. And so when I say, when I hear people say, free Gaza, what I say is, yes, free Gaza from Hamas. In the, in the moments that we have left, how can people help you? Because I know that a lot of the support for the fellowship comes from Christian people here in the United States. How can they help and why is it so urgent that they help right now? Well, I am so humbled to represent the voice and actions of millions of Christians in the United States who donate through the fellowship so that their voice here in Israel will be heard. That as the women and children and families are hiding in the bomb shelters from rockets overhead, they see that sign that says donated with love from Christians in America, and they know that they're not alone. And so that's what I represent here in Israel, the voice of those millions of individuals that Sometimes the government might represent them, sometimes not, but that they're not relying on anyone else to represent them on a national level. They're representing themselves through the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. And you can visit us at www.ifcj.org. And you can always follow me in my daily life on Facebook and Instagram at Yael Eckstein. Yael, thank you so much. Joy to have you here. And uh, we're praying for you during this terrible conflict. And for our audience, we also want to say that you can learn more about the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews and donate, just as Yael said, at ifcj.org.